What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Mike, Captain Braddock, ready. The case I'm going to tell you about tonight is one of the most vicious in the long history of fraud, for it has as its victims our men in uniform. It begins on a troop transport bringing home for furlough and discharge veterans who have served their nation on far-flung battlefields. Our story deals with one of these men, Chuck Martin, whose ordeal under fire will soon be overshadowed by a personal crisis which may accomplish what enemy bullets failed to do, destroy him. Did you hear that, Chuck? He, he's never been to school and he's saying already things yeah, like... Yeah, I heard. When's the last time you saw him? You were kidding. I ain't never seen him in my life except in pictures. Look at him. It's me all over, ain't he? Same eyes. Same ears. Not as much hair, though. How do you like that? He ain't a year old yet, and little Irving should have as much hair as his old man. Kind of young to have lost it already, ain't he? Lost it, he says. He ain't even had time to grow it yet. What makes you guys so ignorant? Ain't you ever had no baby? Well... Not exactly, but take a look at this. Doesn't do her justice. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. There ought to be one in every home. Take a gander, Tex. His uh, baby, he says. Yeah. Plum foolish to leave a filly like that behind. Unless she was roped and tied. <laughs> she was. We were married the day before I shipped out. Hey, I knew a guy once got hitched in a hurry, and he's still regretting it. Well, if it didn't take, I suppose he's better off. Yeah, he got taken, but plenty. Yeah, I reckon she married him for his money. G.I. money. You think she didn't? He was worth more to her dead than alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, some guys are awful saps. Dame ever did that to me. He wouldn't chance to do anything to anybody again. Yeah, a fella can't be too careful. Look, for somebody in particular? Yeah, the lady in 3A. Martin, Mrs. Chuck Martin. Nobody by that name in this building. Well, this is 342 Franklin, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Well, this must be the right place. Here's the return address. Party in 3A is named Kellogg, Grace Kellogg. Here's a picture of Mrs. Martin. Recognize her? Thanks, they do. Something familiar about her. Seems to me I remember a girl like her a while back. Never lived here. Visited sometimes. Ever hear of Karen Spencer? That was her name before we were married. Don't ring no bell. You say she used to visit here. Who? Well, that's the funny part of it. This Kellogg girl moved in here last February. Before that, it was Johnson. Linda Johnson. Now, that's the one the girl in the picture used to visit with. After the Johnson girl moved, never seen either one of them again. Well, no forwarding address? Don't seem to bother around here. Well, sorry, can't help you none. So, that's the story, Captain. I went to the nightclub where she said she used to work, but they never heard of her. I figured my next step was a missing persons bureau. They're putting a bulletin out on her, but the department would be interested. Now, there's a couple of things that... Yes. It follows a familiar pattern. Have Nelson get in touch with me before he sends out that bulletin, will you? Will do, Captain. Now, uh, can you give us any other facts about Mrs. Martin? I guess there isn't too much to say. Three days isn't very long to get to know somebody. No, it isn't. And frequently, in cases like this, well, somebody gets hurt. I know. The guy on the boat was saying something about that. Tell me, how long were you overseas? Oh, about 18 months. 
pretty rough at times? If it wasn't for the letters, you'd brush the whole thing off, but the letters keep you going. You get to know one another in those letters. You make plans for the life you're going to have when you get back home. And when you do get home, everything has gone haywire. You begin to wonder sometimes if you're okay. Up there, you know. I understand. I know what it must mean to you. Now, did she write to you regularly? Never missed a mail call. Kept on working, too. I wanted her to quit, but she said that that way she could save the money I sent her each month. Government allotment? Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about what that guy on the boat said. I've got to know what's happened. Why they say she never lived at that address she gave me. I got a lot of answers coming. How long is it going to take me to get them? Oh, well, it's hard to say. But our best bet is to follow regular police procedure and check all the angles. That's what I was afraid of. Well, I'm not going to sit around waiting. You do it your way and I'll do it mine. And when I find her, she better have all the answers. I hope you do find her. But don't do anything you'll feel sorry for. Don't let your personal feelings run away and place you in a situation that you'll regret later on. Now, can I have your word on that? I won't do anything that any guy in my spot wouldn't do. No harm in that, is there? Guy trying to find his wife? Well, of course not. It's just... Well, remember what I said. Let me know what you turn up. I'll be at the Central Hotel. I'll call you as soon as we have anything definite. Thanks a lot. I'm trying to locate someone. If you got a letter addressed like this, where would you forward it? I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to give out information like that. Well, there must be some way I can find out. She's my wife. Maybe they can help you down at the post office. This is Chuck Martin, apartment 3A. Have we'll go in this box here. Money? The janitor said she's never lived here. Well, I don't know about that, but she's been getting her mail here for quite a spell. He said 3A was rented to uh, Grace Kellogg. That's right. Her mail comes here, too. If you want to make sure, why don't you send her a registered letter? She'd have to sign for it. Thanks. Maybe I will. You're welcome. Yes? Registered letter from Mrs. Chuck Martin. Oh, thanks. I'll be right down. Miss Kellogg? Yes? Maybe you can help me. I'm trying to locate Karen Spencer. Who are you, a cop? She's my wife. Maybe you know her by a married name, Mrs. Chuck Martin. So you're the character who gave me the registered letter routine. I'm sorry, but I have to find her. Never heard of her. That's funny. You both get your mail here, addressed to 3A. I don't know what you're talking about. The postman says he delivers her mail here. You must know what happens to it. I told you I never heard of her. It's a postman's word against yours, and I'll take his any day. You can take anything you want, preferably a powder. Grace, Karen, hurry. What's up? What's the rush? Hurry up. Let me in. Shut the door. You've got trouble, honey. One of the chumps showed up. One of your chumps. I don't get it. None of them's due back yet. This one's right here in town looking for his little bride. How many have you got now that you can't remember any better than this? Skip it. Which one showed up? Where'd you see him? At my place, where the poor sap sent his love letters. Addressed to Mrs. Chuck Martin, remember? You didn't tip him off about this. Are you crazy? Just the same, you better lay low for a while. I've got to get back now. 
And another thing. You better ditch his checks. Quit cashing them. So long now. I'll phone you later from Betty's. Chuck, darling. Save it. Save it for the other chumps. Chumps? I don't know what you're talking about, honey. Come on in, darling. Didn't you get my letter about moving? Guess maybe it arrived after you left. You should have told me Save you Save it, I said. Guy can hear a lot through that door. Maybe you heard too much. How much did you hear, darling? Enough to tell me what a sucker I was. Like the other guys who sign over their pay. So you could have this. You like it? You're the first one of them who's ever seen it. Scare me out! Great! Uh, help me! Please! Shut up! Stay where you are. This thing's liable to go off. So, what are the chumps caught up with you? How many other guys did you double cross? You hear me? How many? Nine. Nine guys you hope would never come back. What did you do? Get out on your knees every night and say a prayer that some of them get killed so you could cash in their insurance? What a laugh they're gonna have when they hear that you cashed it instead. Yeah. They gotta hear about this, and you're gonna tell them. Tell them what a break they're getting with you dead. <laughs> what a funeral you're gonna have, baby. Flowers from nine husbands. Well, that's that. The hotel clerk said he left early this morning. What makes you so sure that he'll get into trouble? If you heard him yesterday, you'd understand. High strung, emotionally unstable, too much pressure and he'll go to pieces. That's why we've got to find him. Do you know what you're doing to these guys? Did you ever stop to think of how they're gonna feel when they find some no good gay made patsies out of them? He puts a lot of things in the letters he writes when he's alone someplace. Things he'd feel foolish saying out loud because they're all mixed up with his hopes and his dreams and his ambitions. Guess any one of them would like to trade places with me now. But they'd sort of envy me. Being able to pay off a double crosser with her own gun. I see. Well, stick with it and keep me posted. Right. Yes, Sergeant? Flash just came in. Sounds like your boy beat us to the punch. Martin, he found her? So, he's locked her in an apartment over on 41st. He's got a gun. Tell him to hold a squad car for me. I'll be right down. Anybody talk to him yet? No, sir. Message came through the hall after you got here. All right, you stay here. I want to talk to him alone. I bet you never thought you'd be glad to hear the cops outside your house. No. It isn't going to do you any good. Get over to that door. Who is it? It's Captain Braddock, Chuck. May I come in? I want to talk to you. Not a chance. I found what I was after, and I'm going to settle things my own way. Think of what you're doing. I have. My mind's made up. I could break this door down and come in after you. You'd only be hurrying things along if you did. Chuck! Get me out of here! Get me out of here! 
Chuck! Let me alone. Listen to me. Is there a phone in there? Phone? Sure. Why? Well, give me the number. You're stalling for time. What's the trick? Well, I give you my word, Chuck. No tricks. I'm asking for one hour, then I'll phone you. How many of those letters are finished? Three. Okay, Braddock, one hour. Give him the number. Six Got that, Braddock? Right. I'll call you as soon as I can. I don't know what for, but remember, no funny business. I gave you my word, Chuck. Well, I'm leaving now. Start moving. <laughs> Got one hour to finish those letters. And make them good. Tell them what a no-good dame you are. Tell them you're sorry, so they won't cry too much when they hear what happens to you. Chuck, don't you see that it isn't any good? You're just fighting yourself. Let the cops in. I'll take anything they want to give me, but you... Shut up! Write me a letter about it. Anything happens to me, you know what they'll do to you, don't you? I've got other plans. You couldn't get away. Every cop in town's waiting outside. Get away? They're wasting their time. When they break in here, we won't be any good to anybody. You're going to... Why not? It looks to me like everything in the world is rotten and I don't want any part of it. You're out of your head. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't care what they call it. In exactly 58 minutes, we aren't going to care about anything. I can't give you any assurance it'll work, George. It's a long gamble, but with two lives at stake, we'll try anything. Yes, I know it's against their regulations, but I'm certain the commissioners will make an exception if they understand what we're trying to do. I'll take the responsibility. Oh, excuse me, George. Well, did you contact her? Yes, everything's set. Sheriff's flying her down himself. We'll have a squad car waiting at the airport. Yeah, how long? Barring headwinds, he figures 35 minutes. It'll take it past 10 from the field. All right, that'll make it close. Hello, George, you've got to do it. You'll be here in 45 minutes. Yes. Well, that'll make it 8.10. Right. Have everything set up, and I'll keep you posted. Well, you'll do it. Keep your fingers crossed. I have had them crossed ever since we came back. How many is that? Eight. Time's about up. You're just going to make it. It must be hard trying to put your heart into something and finding you haven't got one. Yeah? We're still here, Braddock, like I said we'd be. You kidding? What is this? I don't get it. Okay, Braddock, I promised you an hour. You still got five minutes left. You want me to spend it that way? Okay. Anything you say, Braddock. Hang on. <laughs> the cops want us to have some entertainment. Turn that thing on. The local station, he says. Okay, Braddock, it's turned on. You're being funny. It's a little late for cowboys and... Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program at the request of the police department. Please stand by for a special telecast. Chuck, they say you can hear me. It's your mother. If you can hear me, then some of my prayers have been answered. Prayers that I wouldn't be too late. They said I wouldn't be able to see you. But 
they were wrong. I can see you just as plain as I have every day since you went away. As I have ever since you were a little boy and used to come to me with your hurts. And now you got the worst hurt in your whole life. I know how you feel. But doing what you're thinking of won't help a bit. It'll only hurt yourself more by trying to get even with someone who hurt you. Don't you see how wrong it would be? All the little prayers you ever learned should teach you that. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I've always been proud of you, Chuck. Let the guilty one be punished by the proper people. Don't make them punish you, too. Please, for your own sake, make me proud of you now. Prouder than I've ever been. I'm praying that you will. I'm praying you'll come home with me, son. We all miss you so, Chuck. <laughs> Braddock, you're still there. Tell your men they can come in. You don't deserve the break you're getting. You didn't think you'd give me a break like this, did you? Take her downstairs. The case of Chuck Martin and his wife of many aliases serves as a reminder that confidence men and women are constantly on the prowl, seeking out the innocent and the gullible in their search for the easy dollar. Karen will have plenty of time to think about the nine men she bigamously married one of whom became a battle casualty. She had hoped to get $10,000. Instead, she got 20 years in the penitentiary. The scars she left on Chuck Martin have disappeared, just as evil usually disappears when you turn a light on it. Once again, the powerful spotlight of television has exposed another of the many swindles which cost you, the public, millions of dollars a year. Remember, it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. The Racket Squad next week, same time, same station.